Um, I think uh, graffiti artists are excluded, um, especially from perhaps the arts funding system. Um, the interesting thing is that a lot of graffiti artists are extremely skilled. Um, their their um, awareness of their spatial awareness, their graphic skills, you know, their design skills are second to none, and a lot of them don't go to college to learn this stuff. So they're very skilled artists, and they're not recognised, and I do think that they are excluded, yeah. The artists that we worked with during Ill Communication 2, I class as artists, they've all been through art college, art school training of some manner, and they've devoted several years to training and developing their skills, their craftsmanship, and their talents. And yes, I absolutely class all the artists who took part in Ill Communication too as artists. Urbis, what's Urbis got to do with graffiti? Urbis is just selling itself, its own name. It's being controversial. Controversial brings publicity. Like a lot of people go to art school and learn how to be artists, and I just don't see the point. I think the best art comes from the individual learning themselves just through life. Certainly a lot of people I talk to would argue that um, people who come out of university or out of college and then start aren't true to the culture. Of course it's vandalism if it's illegal, of course it is. Regardless of the quality? It doesn't matter, it's still vandalism. But it's an essential part of that culture. Vandalism, is, I suppose, is destruction of property. So when graffiti artists um, paint on public property, they could claim that they are destroying their own property, so they're allowed to do it. Um, I feel that public property is destroyed every day by advertising. Um, big com international companies also do graffiti style marketing, where they are actually doing exactly the same techniques as graffiti artists, stencils, stickers, painting on walls. So at some point there's a decision to persecute somebody for what they're doing. So yeah, graffiti can be vandalism depending yeah, on who decides that basically. Generally we've got better at the way we actually uh, publicise the removal of graffiti and and the, the problems it actually creates within the estates uh, because it, it's, it's a crime and it, and it generally um, drops down the, the, the feeling of the area with, within the community once you start seeing large amounts of graffiti. If it's on somebody's private property and they didn't want it on, we could say legally it's vandalism. Yeah, so we'll just leave that over there because that's very uninteresting. Um, the thing that's exciting about it, if it's good, is if it's exuberant, if it's, if, it's, if it's use of colour and design and style is exciting and if there's, there's that excitement generated presumably through the actual being transgressive and going and making it, going and putting it on that wall because I can imagine that kind of excitement. Um, that can only be a good thing because that's what makes human beings interesting creatures rather than being dull and sitting at home and looking at a computer or a telly. Um, going out and doing something is far more interesting than... You know, if you're doing illegal graffiti at night on a train or something, then the everything's off-key, you know? You can't see. You can't see what colours you've got in your hand. You can't see your hand. You can't see what's in front of you. You don't know who's behind you. <laughs> you know, you're almost in... You're in heartbeat racing mode. But that's the mode you go for. What I do is I wake up every morning and I've got to live one thing and that's my life. And I do it the best I can for me. I ain't going to conform to no TV watching um, brainwashed idiot, you know. I go out paint every single day. I do things my way every single day and that's how you live your life. You abide by your rules but you just got to have that little bit of a bit of yourself for 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 governments and what and these people in control to stop you from doing graffiti and not giving you places to do it is more than graffiti it's control money the council have got a zero tolerance policy to graffiti they spend 
millions each year cleaning up the city. They do. So I would never, you know, I would never go to them and kind of... I mean, you, you've got to respect that. You've got to... You, you, you can't... You know, I'm not a graffiti artist fighting the system. Work, I'm trying to work with it. So how can they, in one sense, say that um, graffiti is a blight and all the rest? I understand with the tagging and all the problem with it, etc. But they, on the other hand, they will commission me to work with a group of kids. We've only ever had one piece of graffiti that we um, commissioned, which was in, I think it was Burnage, um, and that was for a particular... Uh, scheme that was being arranged for a Manchester dig and that graffiti was placed on the wall and then two days later it was removed. Oh, do you feel that was contradictory then? It was, yeah, yeah. It didn't help us in any way whatsoever. It's like, we don't want you to do anything that comes from you because that's the beautiful thing about graffiti. No one taught me how to become an artist in graffiti. I taught myself through the experiences, the danger, the everything that I've gone through with it. There's a lot of messages that come out that are, that are contradictory because it's like you always see councils and councillors and government officials saying that graffiti is a, a blip on society and it causes this and it causes that. And then next minute, you'll get a phone call off um, some major corporate company who will then use it to promote their own... Um, for their own needs. Um, a legal war would encourage artists to do better work. Um, it create competition that people could see. A legal war would also provide, like, a, the public a way to see graffiti in a maybe an easier form. Manchester's a new city and is on the verge of becoming a new kind of kingdom, you know, when it's finished in the next 10 years. And it, it hasn't got any place for graffiti, and I don't expect it to. But what I think should be done is somewhere out of the city, even if it's a few miles out of the city centre, there should be um, a designated place where people can paint where people can turn up and watch people paint. Because all I need is a wall, and I'm, I'm content. I think if you've got, on a Saturday afternoon, six guys or girls painting graffiti and entertaining a local community, doing a huge mural, what's wrong with that? Mike's turntables, spray cans and records. 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 Hey yo, my pen is a merciless sword that burns you open. Throw your arms and legs in a big barrel of vinegar. Puny little men in green uniform want to hurt war cloud. War cloud smash, the planet crash. Deep in the sun, I'm awfully unstable. Spin like a quarter on the edge of a coffee table. Sterling rap cat motherfuckers like AKs. For decades, I infect AIDS to rap brigades. A UK is stranded, swell up your head and burst it. Hideous, my pitiless, pretty hits are the grittiest. Eat through the walls and I look at your girl's skirt cuz. Cambodian dirt buzz, waffle cones and soap suds. Helicopter firepower shower you after April. Warehouse machinery, heavy bionicle chronicle. Old abominable, supersonical, metropolitan. Metacarpals pop orchestras, burn away your vertebrae. Swamp wars in a poetic nexus, razor plexus. Bitter bone lecture epics, old and cryptic. Down in the hollow, men crumble when I mumble. Underwater cyber jungle, lyrics tumble. Hey yo, great cheeks be slaughtered, crawl through all imposters. Urban legend stalkers, fresh up on me, locker. Urban legend stalkers.